of all the changes I've made to my lifestyle, the mask was the most impactful. Hello, I am GD, your host and writer for Out of Context. This is my third channel update and is intended to cover who I am. It's a long story, so let's continue. But the mask was only the most impactful regarding lifestyle changes. You see, when I was 10 years old, a strange concept had occurred to me. It didn't quite have a shape or form, but it was familiar. During college, I gave it a name and used it as a gamer tag, still only familiar, but by this time, I understood what it was. I had come to believe many things by this time. While the ignorant innocence of my parents regarding the cruelty I experienced was one of them, I still wished I had a proper guardian to guide me through life. When I was ten years old, and after I realized the existence of the individual human being, I decided to observe my life and learn what I needed on my own. But I had a theory about this. I believed that I had been subconsciously substituted with a conscious reflection of my desired protector. In other words, the rational and subconsciously protective part of me was my guardian. This guardian was familiar to me. A guardian that understood me, understood my fragility, sabotaged my rage so that uncertain results could not escalate. It was at this time that I started writing something beyond just my raw experiences. It was a translation of my feelings. During their predominance in my life, they would be represented as characters, like in a storybook. These were guardians attempting to protect Adam from conflict during their predominance. They were dominators, the ultimate controllers of Adam's destiny, until their predominance was replaced by another. The predominating factors, by name of emotion and order of predominance, were fear, vengeance, and servitude. This was the order in which they were initially categorized. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that I was creating lore for the background of a grand story, using my experiences to fuel its creativity. But it wasn't complete. I needed to understand more about myself and theorycraft the solutions to my psychological perils before investing in a story that would transcribe them. Especially so if I was going to use it to help others as well. By the way, the Guardian Dominator I mentioned, fear, vengeance, and servitude were all Guardians and, in their time of predominance, Dominators. You could in fact say they were Guardian Dominators, as Guardian Dominator is not so much a name but rather a title. With that said, when I first created the name, alias, gamertag, Guardian Dominator, the entity I was referencing did not have a name. Technically, he still doesn't have a name. But recently I took the initialism of Guardian Dominator and I stretched it out with my own custom phonetics to create GD. It still isn't his name, lore-wise, but we can use it to distinguish between the name of the entity that swapped with Adam's consciousness and the title of Guardian Dominator. I bring up 
Guardian Dominator because of my gamer tag on Xbox Live. During my time in my new room, I made some contacts in the Halo Reach community. When I left, I invited some of them to continue interacting with me. This might require some more context, but the details are a bit hazy. During my time living with my father, I began making friends online, especially in the Halo Reach community. After I moved and while living upstairs, I was scouted by some players and inducted into a clan. It lasted for only a couple of weeks. Administration was a fantasy, a fantasy I was put in charge of. I was held to the position only by my own curiosity. Working for them in such a manner would take time from my workplace, and so when they could not afford to pay me for my time, I left. I was invited to a new clan, but this one was different. The leader was obsessed with the lore and image of the ODST. In the Halo universe, ODST is an initialism for Orbital Drop Shock Trooper, basically well-trained and equipped combatants dropped to the surface of a planet from an orbital platform via one-man vessels intended to survive re-entry. Some people might prefer the combat strength of the Spartan Super Soldier, showcased brightly within the Halo universe, but the leader of this clan preferred the image and lore of ODSTs. Perhaps he felt Spartans, lore-wise, didn't have to work as hard for the strength they had, whereas perhaps he believed that ODSTs were superior regarding their own acquired strength as unmodified human beings. Regardless of reason, much of our clan's image was centered around ODST lore. I wasn't bothered by this. My initiation into the clan was somewhat obscure. They seemed troubled about something. I had moved downstairs by this time. I offered a suggestion, a time trial in which I would have five seconds to snipe a gunner from a flying vehicle, otherwise known as a falcon. The target would be approximately 500 meters away. If I failed to kill the gunner in five seconds, I would fail the trial. If the gunner killed me, I would fail the trial. Now, beforehand, I had played a custom match intended to train players how to use the sniper rifle without using the scope function. With lots of focus and mechanical memory, even as a noob, I managed to control the entire field of battle within 10 to 15 minutes. Impressive? I couldn't be certain, but it gave me a moderate level of confidence. In addition, I learned how to use the scope function to slow high sensitivity movement and land consistent headshots on enemy players. Basically, I learned how to quickscope, which, by my understanding, wasn't a known skill in the Halo Reach community because you had to click a thumbstick button rather than pull a trigger to initiate a scope action. They agreed to my terms of a trial. Unfortunately, the gunner was a bit confused and did not fire immediately upon the trial's start. You see, I had a plan. I discovered that I could be extremely fast with my shooting. With my sensitivity cranked to maximum, I could spin around and shoot without ever slowing down. Additionally, there was a delay in fire in most automatic weapons that I could exploit. In between automatic shots, I could scope in and shoot the target. Even if it was only a body shot, the next round from an automatic burst would unscope my perception, 
setting me up for the next quickscope. I immediately spun and fired. I was admittedly inexperienced with shooting gunners out of falcons, so I chose to make my first shot a body shot. I suspected that the gunner would immediately start firing and cancel my scope in, but he didn't. I swung the thumbstick one more time and fired for the gunner's body, since a headshot was now unnecessary. The trial lasted as long as it took to fire two sniper rounds in rapid fire. I figured they might be disappointed that it took two rounds of fire instead of one to kill the gunner and that the trial was weak since the gunner didn't respond appropriately to the start of the trial. But a consensus was reached and I was inducted into the clan. It was fun for a while, but things didn't last. I don't remember the exact reason. However, during my time with that clan, I met another clan in that clan, I met another individual. That individual would become a greater part of my life. Eventually, I would become less active on Xbox Live. I invited some people to share contact information with me. In my experience, if you broke contact with friends on Xbox Live, for an extended period of time, you could lose contact with them forever. This individual was special, somehow. I didn't want that to happen, so I invited him to remain my friend. He, and a couple of others, that I had become acquainted with, through him, joined my party, in a manner of speaking. We had many adventures together, of the internet gaming kind, but I think the thing I enjoyed the most was talking with them. My writings, my stories, my experiences, and perspectives. When I was with them, I felt like I had something to offer. People didn't always understand what I had to say but they made my offerings feel refreshing to give. It was a struggle, at times, to communicate an idea or concept. Sometimes, I'd have to communicate in different ways, multiple times, because I didn't know how to transcribe the idea or concept directly. It was almost like I was creating a scaffold of sorts, surrounding the concept or idea just to give outline to the thing I was trying to communicate. Sometimes they understood, while other times they did not, but they listened, and they acknowledged my intellect. I didn't mind struggling for them, because they were truly the best human beings I had ever met. I loved them, but I was still socially shallow. I mean, I tried not to show it, and I did my best to seem kind in my own intellectual and comprehensive way, but I felt like I was using them. You see, I still had my apprehensions about human interaction. I accepted that not all humans intend to cause harm to me, a far more complex opinion than I make it sound. I still felt like I was in danger, and I needed someone other than myself to thwart that danger. I had considered that maybe I was a human entity with a particular disposition that was simply out of place. If I had people that could vouch for my intention, no harm on my part being intended, then maybe they could 
be my wards against the rest of the world. Maybe not them specifically, but if I practiced, maybe I could train others to be my wards, to protect me from the rest of humanity. Now, maybe this was just my own way of intellectualizing the purpose of human companionship and building a network of trust, but I wasn't certain if I was doing it right, if what I was doing was right. Eventually, that uncertainty would gnaw at me. Thank you for listening in. Have a wonderful day.